So I understand not everybody's able to attend a session, so I guess we're going to bring the session to you today. Uh, thank you much, so much for viewing us. My name is David Shug, Director of the National International Scholarships Program. In our brief talk today, um, we'd like to let you know about some scholarship opportunities, how you can prepare for them, and how the scholarship application process can help you. So what are the scholarships looking for? Certainly they're looking for GPA. Most students for a lot of these awards have three sevens above. Some of the awards can be a lower 3.0 uh, range. But beyond, this, beyond the GPA, um, they're also looking for highly motivated independent workers, students involved in a variety of extracurricular and co-curricular activities, those who are leaders not just in their field but also in their communities. Basically they're looking for um, those students who have the potential to be future leaders in whatever community it is that they're settling down in. So our goals are to help you make the most of your time at the University of Illinois and perhaps to win a scholarship. So we said we'd make you aware of some opportunities. Uh, we've got a, a scholarships list. Um, you hopefully have looked at it on the website. I'll just run through these briefly. Um, some awards for underclassmen. The um, Harry Truman Scholarship, 60 awards are provided each year. It's for a student interested in a career in public service. Provides $30,000 towards your graduate education. Uh, you apply for this in your junior year. The Goldwater Scholarship, uh, there are 275 Goldwaters up, awarded each year. And the University of Illinois is the national leader as far as number of Goldwater recipients. Goldwater Scholarship is for students in STEM disciplines. Um, so if you know what that is, that's probably you. If you don't know what that is, uh, you must not be in the engineering, math, sciences field. You can apply for this award as a sophomore or as a junior, and it provides $7,500 towards your education at the University of Illinois. The Beinecke Scholarship, another award you can apply for as a junior, uh, is for students who are in the arts, humanities, social sciences. Uh, it provides $34,000 towards your graduate studies, but again, it's an award that you apply for uh, in your junior year. Uh, the Boren Scholarship, uh, another one that the University of Illinois is a national leader in. There's about 150 Boren Awards uh, provided each year. It's a study abroad scholarship for studying non-traditional languages in non-traditional destinations. There is a government service component tied to this one, so if you're interested in working for the federal government, definitely a scholarship to look into. The rest of the scholarships that I'm going to talk about, uh, these are some graduate level awards. Yes, I realize my audience right now, you're uh, most likely a first or second year student, but our idea is to pique your interest in the, some of these awards so you can um, hopefully find out that yes, these are things that you're interested in striving for, put them at the back of your mind and we hope that someday you might consider applying for them. So these are all expenses paid awards, you apply for them about a year in advance of the study, so most students are applying at the beginning of their senior year. These opportunities all happen to be overseas. Again, we've got much more information on our website, but this is just to highlight some of the awards. Uh, the first set, I'll call them the, the British-Irish Scholarships. The Gates Cambridge Award, the Marshall Scholarship, Rhodes Scholarship are all for study in the United Kingdom. Uh, the Mitchell Scholarship is good for study in, in Ireland. Marshall Scholarship, you can receive a master's degree or a PhD. Again, all expenses paid at any British university. Uh, we've got recent success from, the, from Marshall Scholars from the University of Illinois. Mitchell Scholarship is good for one year of study in Ireland or Northern Ireland. You can often receive a, one, a, deg a master's degree in one year at, at any Irish institution under the, under the Mitchell Scholarship. The Rhodes Scholarship is good for study at Oxford University in the United Kingdom for a master's degree or a PhD. Uh, there's 32 Rhodes Scholars named each year. And the last one I'm going to uh, mention in this group is the Gates Cambridge Scholarship, good for one to four years of study, so a master's or a PhD at Cambridge University in the United Kingdom. So if Cambridge happens to be one of the best places in the world for you to study, you, be, you should be uh, thinking of applying for a Gates Cambridge Scholarship. If not, um, certainly not an award you'd be applying for. The next scholarship I'll, I'll highlight and spend a, a briefly a bit more time on, the Fulbright Award. Uh, the Fulbright offers 1,700 grants. We have a lot of students from Illinois applying. We're generally among the top five or ten uh, universities or public institutions as far as recipients of Fulbright Awards. Um, generally we have 50 to 70 students applying for these and a dozen or so students winning awards. Fulbright can be used anywhere in the world, uh, basically any one of 140 different countries, to do almost anything. Um, basically it's a self-designed study abroad project. How would you like to spend your time overseas? Can be taking classes in some countries, can be doing independent research, working in a lab, uh, doing an arts um, an arts type project with a mentor. There's also a number of English teaching opportunities to the Fulbright program 
um, where they give you some training, and it's not just for teachers either. Um, so that's the uh, general overview on the Fulbright Scholarship. Loose Scholars Program. This one is different than the other awards. It's good for a one-year, uh, basically, internship in Asia. The catch is that it's for anybody who doesn't know much about Asia right now. So if you're Asian studies major or minor or spent a lot of time there, you'd not be eligible. Their goal is to uh, provide an Asian experience for those students who haven't yet encountered Asia but are going to be um, rising stars in whatever field they're going to. They're going to have this year of Asia experience and they think that's a good thing. The last award that I'll mention is the Churchill Scholarship. Churchill is again for those students in the science, math, engineering fields, good for a one-year degree, a master's degree at Cambridge University, again in the United Kingdom. Uh, University of Illinois actually is, has the, the highest number of Churchill scholars among all public institutions in the U.S. So that for those students in the STEM disciplines, a great way to receive a master's degree overseas, often the times when students will come back to the U.S. and receive their Ph.D. So these are the scholarships that our office generally works with. Uh, we also, on an ad hoc basis, you um, find a scholarship, that, a nationally competitive award that you're interested in applying for. Our office is happy to provide feedback, um, help you do your best to make the application look as, look as strong as possible. So for first and second year students, since a lot of these scholarships are not due until, um, due until your junior, senior year, or even afterwards, we like to spend time thinking about things you can be doing to prepare yourself to be a more competitive applicant for these scholarships. But really beyond that, it's more about how can you make the most of your time at Illinois. So a scholarships application generally includes personal statements, transcripts, a reason for why you're applying for the scholarship, and then they're also um, looking for a resume, of course. So your job, um, you need to write a personal statement. So give yourself spectacular experiences to write about in your personal statement. You know, start your own business, train for and run your marathon, submit your poetry to whatever, whatever anthology journal, apply for a patent, do that interesting summer abroad opportunity, start your own business. All those cool things that you thought, oh, someday it'd be great to do these, why not now? You've got more resources here at the University of Illinois more interested people, and actually quite a bit, a reasonable amount of time than you're going to have at later stages of your life. So think about how would you like to be spending your time, what are your dreams, and go out and start to work at some of them. I realize it's much easier to talk about than it is to do, but we're just suggesting that you aim high in what you're looking for. So that'll help you out writing your personal statements. So three years from now, you're like, oh, I'd like to apply for the scholarship, but I've got nothing to say. So now's your time to give yourself something to say. You're going to need between three and eight letters of recommendation for these awards. Um, so three to eight letters of recommendation, that can sound kind of intimidating, but break it down a little bit. You make it a goal to get to know one professor um, really well each semester. All of a sudden you add up the semesters and oh yeah, you've got a reasonable number of people. You find that professor that you like, take a class with that same person again. They're going to be able to then talk about how much you grew and developed from the time that they first saw you to the time that they saw you in their later class. Um, work on an independent study with a professor. Um, you can work with your college, work with your honors deans, and organize things uh, for the department. Start a speaker series. Think about how could my department, how could my major be better? And work with these people to make these things happen. You're going to get to know people on this campus in a much better way than you otherwise would. And beyond that, uh, you're going to make the, help make our campus a better place. That works out well for everyone. Now, the single best way that you can get to know a faculty member on our campus is by conducting research. So every single University of Illinois professor um, is doing research, and no matter what their field is, whether, it's a, whether you're an FAA or engineering or, or history, they're researching, they're writing, they're performing, they're creating something. So you see them, you know, the 20% of the time they're spending in the classroom. The rest of the time, they're working on research, and oftentimes they have opportunities for undergraduates to assist them in that. So my suggestion is take a look, if you haven't done this yet already, go through the website in your department or in similar majors, read over the profile of what professors are doing. Take a look at what kind of, read the last article that they've written when you find those that are interesting to you, and then approach them and say, hey, I read this, I read this article that you wrote, I looked at this, this piece you performed, I'm really interested in your work, and, I'm, and I'd, like to, I'd like to find a way to help out. Now, sometimes this is strictly volunteer, you show up five hours a week and get your foot in the door. Um, oftentimes there are students who can receive academic credit. You get an independent study course for working on research with a professor. Every once in a long while, they've got a grant or something they can pay you. That's not something to count on. Really what you're looking for 
is the experience. You're going to get to know that faculty member much better in a one-on-one -on -one relationship or in a small group as part of a research team than you ever would sitting in a large classroom. So those are just some suggestions that you want to um, think about in order to get to know some of these faculty. So a personal statement, letters of recommendation, um, transcripts. Of course, we need, to have, we need to have good grades, right, for these scholarships. So scholarship committees are looking at Yes, you need to have good grades, but then beyond that, they're looking at both the breadth and the depth of the courses that you're taking. So by depth, I mean, are you taking the most rigorous courses in your discipline? It's not unheard of for scholarship applicants to be taking graduate level courses as an undergrad. They want to see that you're taking the most advanced courses. If there's an honors track, you're taking it. If there's potential for taking graduate level courses, that those are things that you're pursuing. That's what's going to make you stand out. Scholarship committees are pretty smart. They're going to be taking a look at those things and wanting to see that you actually challenge yourself and you spent most of your time at the University of Illinois doing a lot of learning. Now that being said, um, scholarships are also interested in the breadth of the courses that you're taking. They're looking for well-rounded people. None of them are looking for somebody who's pigeonholed specialist in one thing and can't talk about the rest of the world or communicate with, with somebody who's from a different discipline. So they are interested, and I realize some of you don't have very much, very many opportunities to do this, but in your general education courses even, Take the courses that are interesting to you. you so you've got a class that you can take at 8 a.m. that looks, or 9 a.m. that looks really cool and something that you might use the rest of your life, but it's at 9 a.m. Or you've got another uh, one that looks like it's a blow-off that fits in your schedule at 2 o'clock. Hopefully you're the kind of person who's taking the more interesting course at 9 o'clock in the morning. That's going to help you better later on, and that's going to be the, the kind of person that a scholarship committee is looking for. So we've got your personal statement. Uh, we've got your transcripts, we've got your letters of recommendation. The last piece, uh, of course, that a scholarship committee is looking for is the resume. And our advice on the resume is do good things that happen to look good on a resume. So, what do I mean by that? Um, one, you want to make sure that you're doing things that you care about, right? Um, you want to be able to continue those things, you want to be making the difference. There's not a one thing that, oh, what, what should I be doing to help uh, make me a better scholarship applicant. It's not like that. It's what do you care about? What are your talents? What are your interests? And you think about what are some needs out there? Uh, world's not a perfect place. Your major here on campus, uh, wherever you might be studying abroad right now, your hometown, what is something that could be better? What could be improved on? How can you match then your talents, your gifts, your ideas with some needs out there? You put those two things together and make something happen. We encourage you, you know, certainly at campus level, getting involved in, in or starting um, something. There's a huge number of registered student organizations on campus. So there's probably other people interested in, in doing what you're doing. Bring, join one of those groups and put them in the right direction. Or if they're not, if it's not happening right now, start one on your own. And then beyond that, I encourage you to think beyond the campus. What can you do outside of your time at the University of Illinois? It's actually pretty easy to be very involved on, on campus. With the University of Illinois, we're kind of a little bubble here too. Uh, for those of you who are studying overseas, things are much more difficult uh, when, you're, when, you're, when you're in a different environment. So I challenge you to, yes, do good things at Illinois, but then take those things someplace else as well. Not just working with students, not just working on your campus. Bring other campuses involved, bring other people involved. Make it greater than, than just your dorm, just, just our campus here. Those are some challenges for you. I'm also going to refer you to another site in our website. Uh, we've got a timeline. There's a uh, link on there from getting started. Uh, basically some things that you can be doing on, on campus. Um, of course, you know, taking advantage of faculty office hours, taking multiple classes with faculty you like. Um, we talked about that. Here's an example of a couple different letters of recommendation. The first one, uh, Johnny was a good student in my class. Uh, Johnny got an A, showed up every day, did his homework, uh, good student, hope he gets the scholarship. Okay, okay letter. Second letter, Megan was a student as a freshman in my course. She stood out for, she stood out in the discussion section uh, where she always had brought really insightful pieces to the, to the classroom. She later took my class as a junior and I saw how much she'd advanced since then. She worked with me on an independent research project. She started her senior honors thesis junior year. She's doing amazing things. She's going to be presenting at this next um, whatever conference, 
And of the students that I've worked with in the last 15 years, uh, Megan is in the top 2% that I've ever encountered. Now the first letter is nice. The second letter, that's a scholarship letter. So your goal is to make faculty want to write letters like the second letter for you. So enough about faculty. I'll go on that for a long time. So there's so much going on in the University of Illinois campus that you need to f make sure that you're aware of what those things are. Make sure that you're on the listserv from your department from your major when you find out about speaker series going on. Think about where are these professors, well, these professors that you're supposed to be getting to know, where are they at? They're going to all the things that you're probably like, oh, speaker is providing a overview on this topic. You're like, oh, I, I can do that or I can go hang out with some friends. Hopefully every once in a while you go to some of those things at your department and who's going to be there? It's going to be a bunch of professors and oh, you're going to run into them and then you have something to talk to them about in office hours. You're going to be able to talk to them there and then what, later on when they're writing letters of recommendation, they're going to remember that and say, oh, it's one of the only, un only undergrads who's showing up to these things. This person's really interested in learning and you get to learn about all the cutting edge stuff. Nobody's coming to campus and giving talks about old news. It's all about what's happening right now. And you as a leader in your field, that's the kind of information that you want to be working on. So I'm going to give you uh, just a couple examples of some recent scholarship winners. Um, we have a, a student who won the Marshall Scholarship um, Integrative Biology. She had a, two different publications with two different research groups uh, before, um, um, before graduating. Um, 3.95 GPA, James Scholar. She took 12 classes with graduate students before she graduated, including music. Now, this was a biology person, not, not a musician. Uh, she spent uh, time in Costa Rica doing research, and she also went to Uganda for a summer. Now, the person didn't have all sorts of funding, so she went and actually received some grants from outside sources to help pay for her to do her research in Uganda. She came back from that experience and said, wait a minute, people don't know enough about these issues, so she founded a branch of Roots and Shoots, an environmental justice organization on campus. Um, beyond just starting that on campus, she went to some local schools and presented information. And then she made a video about this and sent that video to the National Conference of Roots and Shoots and shared her experiences with, with other colleges so they could build on that. The student ran a half marathon, finished in the top 3% um, of that race, did conservation work in Peru. Her three-letter recommendation writers, one said she was in the top 0.1% of students they'd encountered, uh, the most accomplished undergrad, and the other one said she's like a grad student. So that, that was a Marshall Awardee. A Beinecke Scholar, uh, Anthropology 3.9 GPA, uh, James Scholar, uh, she's the only student in a graduate level class as a junior. Um, she did independent study and isotopic analysis, I don't know what that means. Um, archaeological Summer Field School, did, was an excavation volunteer at, at, a, at another university um, over a summer. She was treasurer of her undergraduate student organization, learned sign language because she was interested in it. This is a student who needed to work on campus to, to pay some bills. Uh, so she found a couple different jobs, one working as a lab technician at the Public Service Archaeological Program, so she's getting paid to do something similar related to her major. And then, just randomly, she also was working as an office assistant for uh, the campus television uh, TV station, WILL. From that, she happened to get a spot in, as an extra on a couple movie scenes, and she was shown on, on PBS. So you make the most of, of the opportunities that you're put in. Um, one of her recommenders said she was among the best in 22 years of teaching. Another one said in the top 2% and one said one of the best in five years of teaching. So my goal is to challenge you, not intimidate you. None of these things that I just talked about had either of these students done in their freshman year. These are all things that they did during their sophomore, junior, senior years. So it's really up to you. Is how would you like to spend the, most, the rest of your time at the University of Illinois? So congratulations on making it this far. You must be the type of student the University of Illinois is looking for and applying for these scholarships. We usually have about 100 or so applicants for each of these awards, and I hope that you are among those students. So the next step, if you're interested in this, is make an appointment via Skype or phone if you're not in the area. This will be your chance to talk about what your plans are for the future and how you can spend your time at the University of Illinois to help make those plans um, become a reality.